Hello everyone, it is Melody and I am coming at you live, bro. <laughs> My nose, okay. It's Melody and I'm coming at you live, bro. You already know. So, today's video is about the ways that Korea has changed me. Uh, my contract's up the end of February, so I basically have a little over four months left. And time is flying. I mean, I feel like the first year went by fast, but the second year, man, this second year has just been like... So... I put together a list of the different ways that Korea has changed me and I kind of put them in different categories. So we have level one. So level one changes are like the little habits I've picked up, little sayings, little things like that. Things that will probably leave me once I return home to the States. Level two are things that are that have changed me on like a deeper level. So things that will uh, more than likely stay with me, but not necessarily. And then level three, those are the changes that for sure have altered the course of my life that like will always, always stay with me that I got here. So yeah, we're gonna go level one, level two, level three, and talk about all the ways that Korea has changed your girl. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started with my level one changes. So little habits I've picked up, things that I do here that I probably won't do when I get home, but I mean, I guess we'll see. All right, so the first level one change, I now eat with two hands. And I honestly didn't realize that until maybe like a month ago and I, I look at myself eating lunch at school and I'm like, wow, I'm kind of ambidextrous now. Here, it just makes sense because for every meal, you always have rice, a meat, banchan, which is like a bunch of side dishes, and a soup. Now, it tastes better when you have a little bit of everything on your spoon, so you scoop the rice with my left hand. My right hand, I put a little bit of, you know, the meat, maybe put a little side dish, da 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 and then each bite, you kind of get all the flavors. Kind of cool. The second thing on our level one list, I don't say bless you to people when they sneeze now which is something that i hope doesn't stay with me and i'm gonna like make a conscious effort to say when i get back home but here in korea like saying bless you is not a thing i said it when i first got here and people kind of like were taken aback and didn't understand what i was saying so it just doesn't even come out automatically anymore all right uh number three on our level one I say uh after certain words. So I don't know what the rule is in the Korean language as to why they do this, but after certain words like cute, nice, home plus, they add uh. So it's cute, home plus, nice. This is how they pronounce these words and I have absolutely 100% started to do that too. <laughs> All right, our next thing. I am a charades master nowadays. Like speaking with people is really difficult because I don't really speak Korean. I can understand certain words and kind of like put things together. But yeah, the biggest thing that I do is charades. Like going to the doctor or even like going to a restaurant, pointing at the menu and kind of like gesturing what I want to eat. I am charades queen nowadays put me on your team we're gonna kill it basically all right so those are my level one changes so let's go on to level two things that have affected me on a deeper level all right so number one i am so much more open than i used to be and i mean open to people and also open to just life if that makes sense so i am an introvert but i also enjoy being around people but kind of like selectively i don't know how to explain it like if you're an introvert maybe you can relate but like people are a source of anxiety you know what i mean unless they're like my people and i think because of that i kind of would keep myself closed off that's kind of like where i was when i first came here and that's kind of how i still am but i'm way more open and receptive to other people and i think a huge part of that is being a teacher so i knew coming into it like 
I definitely want to get to know my students and while it'd be absolutely impossible for me to like learn everyone's name I teach like over 600 students uh, I definitely want to try to like make a connection where I can you know and I can't make a connection if I'm not willing to engage with them so for me like when I first got here a big thing that was like completely like nerve-wracking and taking me out of my comfort zone was just going through the hallways and making sure to engage back with them and like the students that I do recognize from class or like that I have a little bit of rapport with like communicating with them and going out of my way to say hello now it doesn't always like go over well these little 14 to 16 year old girls they can burn you have your ego hurting but in the moments where you do see one student and you stop and you chat and you can just tell that they really appreciate it and they feel special that just you know makes all the burns <laughs> like totally irrelevant all right the next thing on the list public speaking ain't no thing but a chicken wing nowadays before you came put me in front of people and i literally would turn red and i would stumble over my words or i would speak like at lightning speed but being a teacher you kind of get over it for me that was my biggest fear public speaking like what if the people aren't receptive to you what if they don't really care about what you're saying and that honestly happens at least one time a week that no one cares what i'm saying so you just get over it and now i feel like i could dominate like in the public speaking game because of this which i love like uh i love that because before i was really 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 like <laughs> make me very very anxious next thing i am so much more fluid i'm able to flow better than i ever have in my life i feel like it's just in life you know what i mean especially living in another country things are gonna come up things are gonna happen that you have to just roll with the punches there's really nothing else you can do korea like am set up because their 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 culture is like being very last minute so on top of like just living in another country the plot twists that come with that you have korean plot twists so i feel like going back home i'll be so much more able to just peacefully like internally be peaceful when the storms get crazy or when like things just start happening that you're not really anticipating now it's just like oh plot twist and then just do what i gotta do so yeah. All right, and the last thing on our level two list is I am so much more confident in my skin. Your perception of me doesn't necessarily make or break me anymore. And yeah, so that definitely is the plus side to being stared at everywhere you go. You either can be diminished by it, you know, like wanna hide, not wanna go out, or you can just be like, well, let's give them something to look at. like. Let's go. So yeah, those are really the two options and I picked the latter to just be like, okay, this is me if you wanna stare. Uh, yeah, just don't take a picture because it's disrespectful. You know what I mean? Like, we're not gonna do that. So those were our level two changes that have happened within me while I've been in Korea. And now we're going on to level three. So the change that happened in level three is one that has altered the course of my life that will stick with me and that is i think the big picture of me coming here um yeah so let's just go ahead and get right into it level three my change that has happened is i now have a greater understanding of my purpose and that is because of my relationship that i've developed with god so before i came here I was a little metaphysical baby. Um, I loved going to my local crystal shop and reading books about like awareness and kind of dabbling in Buddhism. I didn't really like to say God, I like to say the universe. And at the time it felt right, but it didn't feel 100% right. Like something felt like it was missing. So I came here and that's kind of where I was, but I grew up in the church, going to church every weekend, going to church on Wednesdays. I grew up with that foundation, but then I went off to college and stopped really believing in a way. Like I just had some serious doubts and I really had no one to talk to about these doubts. So I kind of just put it off and then just got busy in other areas of my life. And then I found myself, mm, am I gonna talk about this? I guess I will. Um, so then I found myself, uh, yeah, depressed. And I didn't know what to do. This was my freshman year, the end of my freshman year of college. 
So I ended up moving back home. Like I went to FIU in Miami, I moved back home. Uh, and one of the things that helped me like come out of the depression was metaphysical stuff. I read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And because it has such like a positive impact on my life, I thought, okay, like this is my truth. You know, throughout college, I kind of dived further into that. But again, like I said, something was just missing for me. So coming to Korea, I actually was dating someone. I got to Korea and we broke up a month after I got here. And it was just like a really painful breakup. And I think when like bad things happen like that or like really difficult times come, you go back to what you've always have known. And for me, that was Christianity, that was God, that was Jesus. And that's when I kind of started to go to church more. There was a uh, church here in my town that I would start going to their English service. One of my friends here, like one of my closest friends, she actually used to be a missionary which only God could have orchestrated that. So in the beginning when I'm first, you know, going back to church, I have so many questions and I have someone now to answer these questions. Yeah, that opened the door to us then starting a Bible study, which had a ripple effect of us like gathering a group of six to seven people each week that we would have this Bible study and read and talk and pray. And I just felt my my faith and like my belief in God and something greater and and just everything like that and like his purpose just growing and growing and that was about a year ago i have a relationship with him you know and i think that was the big part of the whole metaphysical thing that lost me i didn't feel like i had a connection or like a relationship when i was calling god the universe it felt like just some greater force but calling god what it is calling god god for me and, and praying and talking and seeing the way that he works in my life and just has just done so much. That relationship just makes all the difference. So yeah, I'm definitely not saying that you're gonna come to Korea and find God, but being away and being so far from your comfort zone and like if you do go through hard times while you are, you know, abroad, whatever your foundation is, you're definitely more likely to lean back upon it. But yeah, I mean, that's just what happened to me and these are, my experiences and that's going to be it for me these are the ways that korea has changed me and has changed my life i hope you enjoyed like the three levels i really 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 enjoy kind of diving deeper and, and talking about um more introspective things and hopefully you did too if you enjoyed this video definitely give it a thumbs up and yeah leave a comment below if you have any questions about what i was talking about about the things i was talking about and i would like to know how have you changed in 2016 what are the biggest areas of your life that you feel like you have grown or not grown in i mean we have what two more months left so maybe <laughs> Some more changes are coming on its way. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope life is treating you well. I hope you're rolling with the plot twist. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. And Yungi, Keseo. Peace. I'm going to talk about all things natural hair. So as you can tell, I am natural. I live in Korea and I've lived here for a year and a half and I've maintained my hair and it's grown quite a bit while I've been here. So I thought that I would give you some tips on how to maintain your natural hair while you are abroad, while you are not.